Greetings, this is Dexter Sullivan, president of the Black Legacy Advancement Coalition, and I am thrilled to host our very special guest, the one and only Dr. Hubert Massey. Dr. Massey, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, how are you? Excellent, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, carve out some space to just talk and uh, get to know you a little bit better. I've known you now for goodness, going on 26 years, yeah. Yeah. and uh, I think that the impact that you've made, not only in the city of Detroit, but around the world, has changed the game as far as communication, arts, uh, and just expression in general. Talk to us a little bit about your journey and how you arrived in Detroit. So I arrived in Detroit um, from Grand Valley State University, but I can back up a little further because I'm originally from Flint. Uh, Flint, Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, and uh, I was playing sports because I ran track and played football, and I was like any young young kid who always uh, aspired to be a, a great athlete. Right. And uh, so I, I got the attention of Grand Valley State University, uh, and they ended up giving me a scholarship. So I went to Grand Valley State University playing football, but I was always doing art since I was at the age of five or six, and uh, of course. Being an athlete, you have injuries. Um, I was a pro prospect my sophomore year in, uh, in uh, college. I uh, wow. ended up suffering a knee operation after my sophomore, sophomore year. And uh, so I had some layover time. I uh, ended up getting a scholarship to go to the University of London in England, Slate Institute of Fine Art, which really changed my world. Because wow. when I went over there and I got to see the artwork, Peter Paul Rubin, Leonardo da Vinci's uh, cartoon drawings, um, Vermeer's, uh, I was just really truly impressed. And one of the things that struck to me that artists were uh, not just specialized in art, but they were artists with many, uh, many uh, different dimensions as far as for uh, techniques and abilities. And um, so that was one of the things I wanted to bring back to the States was that uh, by being an artist, you, you not only can be a, a sculptor, but you can be a painter. Mm -hmm. You can be a person who does uh, egg tempera, fresco painting, all those type of things. And uh, I came here and worked, so I started working for uh, the sign company. Uh, got hired two years before I got out of college wow. uh, to work for the sign company and I'm working for them. And I'm painting these large scales, so all billboards were all hand painted. They were 14 by 48 feet. Some of them were 20 feet by 78 feet. But when you seen them, you thought they were photorealistic, but they were actually painted with paint brushes. That's amazing. Yeah. So literally, the billboards that we see on the highway, yes. on roads, yes. you're painting those by hand. Those, those are all hand painted. That's amazing. Studio. Yeah. So, uh, but of course, the digital age came in back in 1992. That wiped a lot of artists off because of the, uh, uh, they start developing the ability to, to not only pixelate the uh, pictures, but get them so tight that you couldn't even see the pixelation in the actual uh, pictures and all. And um, they can uh, produce them, uh, produce the billboards by printing them out, as opposed to having an artist hand paint those in. But I had just bridged over, I did the, uh, uh, the Athenium Hotel in Greektown. Absolutely. It was a large uh, uh, painting called uh, uh, Leokun, or Leokun, uh, the Def and, and this was an oil painting on canvas. It was about 30 feet high, 15 feet wide. Wow. So I ended up doing about 17, after that I ended up doing about 17 monumental pieces here in the city of Detroit, from the Charles H. Wright Museum to Campus Marshes to uh, Paradise Valley. Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank, IRS yes. building, so just so many other pieces I've been doing. And Detroit, infamous for creativity, yes. uh, design. You have CCS, one of the only, if the only, UNESCO city, Detroit is. Yes. Uh, CCS leads in that effort. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got Henry Ford and the $5 day and the uh, creation of the assembly line. and. Yes. Uh, so many beautiful cars that have come out of Detroit. You've got Motown and that creative aspect. How important are the arts to Detroit 
and how has that been an integral part of your story? Yeah, so it's been extremely important, uh, uh, integral part in my work. You had Diego Rivera who did the first frescoes or the largest frescoes in the United States here in the city of Detroit. It's uh, with the automotive people at the Detroit Institute of Arts. Um, and it just so happened I had an opportunity to study up under Diego Rivera's assistants who were 80 something years old. Uh, the that was when you were in Europe? No, that was here in the city of Detroit. Wow, that was right here? Yes. So I had an opportunity because I was still doing large uh, monumental pieces of artwork and somebody discovered me and said, you know, they're giving a, a workshop with Diego Rivera's assistants on how frescoes are actually made. And frescoes are ancient, it's an ancient form of painting. It goes all the way back to the Egyptian hieroglyphics and everything. And I was just extremely uh, excited about it because I found out that Diego Rivera was a sign painter, just like myself. Wow. And because of that, uh, I really took to it. So there was 12 artists that were chosen to learn this process. And out of 12, I was the only one that really uh, uh, learned the process and kept the process going. That's pretty phenomenal. It's almost somewhat providential, all of those overlaps uh, with Diego Rivero, his art being here, yeah. you studying under his assistance, yeah. you all both being sign painters. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, I alluded to it before, knowing you now for these 26 years, mm -hmm. Uh, as a young man born and raised in the city of Detroit, mm -hmm. I had the privilege of being your student yes. as a young man at uh, the Paul Robeson Academy right. with uh, men like uh, Ray Johnson, who was our principal, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Ralph Bland, uh, Spencer Murray, Bessie Burden, Miss mm -hmm. Brooks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we had some of the best. Oh, you know, yeah. It was a really yeah. an amazing season yeah. uh, and run there at Paul Robeson Academy. How important is education for mm. young people and mm. that exposure to the arts yeah. at an early age? Well, it's extremely important. I mean, that was one of the uh, catalysts is actually uh, to get me motivated to, uh, to do in the arts and to be able to, uh, uh, be able to be around our young kids and be able to show that the possibilities are there. Uh, it, was, it was really wonderful. Um, I had great opportunities uh, at Paul, Paul Robeson because a lot of the designs that I created, uh, especially for the Charles H. Wright Museum, I created right in the classroom. I wanted the kids to get a sense of uh, being able to see the process of uh, how artwork is created and the possibilities that whatever you put your mind to it, you can do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Shifting a bit, um, in the storyline of Detroit, serving uh, the community, the Black Legacy Advancement Coalition, we're endeavoring to stand up the Ground Up Project on Detroit's west side in District 5, uh, right in the heart of LaSalle Gardens and Dexter Linwood, those neighborhoods. And that building that we're rehabilitating will have a restaurant, it'll have a barbershop, and then the exterior our plan is to do a large art installation. Yes. Champion by yourself. Yes. And the design there, the desire is that that space would be a point of inspiration and hope. Mm -hmm. How important is it that we would have more creative opportunities for artists in Detroit to place that expression, to be a part of the storyline of Detroit's rebirth and the things that we're experiencing right now? Yeah, I think we, uh, it has a great impact uh, being able to uh, incorporate the, the art. Um, one of the things is being able to have community forums and getting people involved in the, in the process, having a conversation, uh, listening to people who have stories about that community um, uh, really makes it rich, it makes it inviting, makes people feel like they're part of something that's, that's new. And I just feel that that's, that's, a, that's a great opportunity. Absolutely. Today, we're actually recording uh, here at the African American Museum, the Charles H. Wright Museum, here in the city of Detroit. And we wanted to film in this location because it has a huge pulse on the civil rights legacy uh, that is Detroit. And then also, you have some work featured right here in this, in this building. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah, so I'm the artist who actually designed a genealogy. It's the large 72 foot in diameter terrazzo flooring that's in the uh, 
that's in the atrium of the Charles H. Wright Museum up under the dome. Wow, and that piece is absolutely beautiful. Everyone that enters the space sees it. I mean, it, it just stands out and really uh, kind of brings that entire rotunda into view of just kind of the greatness that it is. Uh, tell us maybe a few other pieces that you've done in Detroit, infamous works that we see every yeah. day and maybe not, not realize that uh, Dr. Hubert Massey right. did this. Yeah, so uh, Campus Marshes, I created two large uh, granite stone pieces there. Uh, also uh, Harmony Park, I redesigned that, it's called Paradise Valley. Yes. It has medallions in there, it tells the history about uh, the city of Detroit back in the 30s or so. Uh, just like Harlem, uh, Detroit, was, Detroit was like that. A lot of musicians come here. Uh, Louis Armstrong, uh, Cab Calloway, a lot of, uh, of uh, very prominent artists come to sit, came to the city of Detroit. Uh, Tabernacles Church, I did their stained glass. Uh, 15, uh, 25 feet high, 15 feet wide. Uh, Center for Creative Studies, uh, 30 foot by 30 foot tile mural on the side of the uh, parking lot structure I did. Um, the Federal Reserve Bank, I did their lobby. Tremendous. Um, yeah, so that's to name a few. Um, I also did the Athenium Hotel, um, uh, which is a, a large uh, uh, painting. Um, 25 feet high, 15 feet wide, it's a diptych. Um, but it's about 17, 17 monumental pieces of artwork that I've created in the city of Detroit. Phenomenal. The power to the people. Yes. We had to talk about that. We're in an interesting time in the social justice space, civil rights space mm -hmm. uh, for black Americans. And that piece was timely uh, and in the rhythm of what was going on in the country in 2020. Mm -hmm. It was featured in the New York Times. Yes. Maybe tell us a little bit about the inspiration and what that piece was about. So that, that inspiration came because a group of kids decided they wanted something like uh, that that was done in um, Washington, D.C. Uh, when Black Lives Matter. And I thought Detroit was, you know, even though all our lives matter and all, but I just thought that Detroit had a different type of uh, a voice in there too. Uh, we, we were here uh, in the 1967 uprising. Um, um, a lot of uh, movements were going on here in the city of Detroit. And I, and I, and I thought that power to the people uh, would, even though it's, a, it's, it's sort of a, a throwback to the past, but it's also the present. Absolutely. And I, I felt that it was something that uh, Detroit needs to stand along and say power to the people, power to all the people. And that's where, um, that's what we came up with the piece at. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've seen it and I'm sure many of the people watching this have seen that piece as well. And just the tremendous impact that it's making for Detroit and a symbol of hope, a symbol of striving and reaching that goal of uh, seeing that power distributed yeah. equally and, and rightly, uh, bringing equity to the black community in Detroit. Yeah, there was, and actually, we had quite a few, about 25, 30 kids work with us on the, on the project, which wow. was really great to see the young folks really get involved in the process. It took us less than two days. The piece was 300 and something feet long, 20, 20, 20 something feet wide and we did it in a couple of days. Just the collaboration, we're working with uh, young folks and kids and they just felt a part of, uh, we were doing a part of history here in the city of Detroit. And they were talking about also making it a permanent uh, installation for the city of Detroit. So I think that's awesome. That would be excellent. Yes. What are you working on right now that we should be mm -hmm. expecting? Yes, so there's quite a few, quite a few projects. The ones I will tell you about uh, I'm doing a 12 foot by 65 foot uh, mural painting up in Muskegon, uh, Michigan. Uh, it's basically uh, uh, to tell their, their story about their community because I'm, I'm a person who's really interested in celebrating communities through art and getting people, because see, there are a lot of stories that are, are, that are out there that need to be told and I get the opportunity to translate those stories into a piece of artwork. 
so that that history and that culture will never, we never lose it and all. I met a lady here in the city of Detroit, she was 106 years old, and she told me about uh, the 67 uprising when we did the, the piece over at the uh, Claremont and uh, Rosa Park area. And it was just really fascinating. But some of the other pieces I'm doing, I'm doing Southfield, Michigan, I'm doing a, a nine monoliths for Lawrence Tech, um, and that should be uh, completed sometime this year. Um, an obelisk uh, in Southfield, Michigan, uh, that I'm working on, and uh, um, and there's a couple other pieces, um, uh, and they should be coming out pretty soon. So yes, yes. he did miss one. Yes. Uh, he's doing the ground up project installation as that's well. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my right. goodness! Right. I'm, I'm just joking. Yeah. But we are extremely excited about yeah. that piece simply because of the community involvement um, that, yes. that you've required of us. Yes. Uh, this coming week, actually, we're hosting uh, a meeting with uh, Rudy Marco, the president of the LaSalle Gardens Community oh, yeah. Association, yeah. Mm -hmm. and some of the other community associations in the neighborhood to get that community input, to find out what is the pulse, what is the heartbeat, yeah. what's already happening in the yeah. community, yeah. how do we connect to that storyline, right. extrapolate that, and really blow that out in a way that connects the community to the story that's being that's told. That's right, and, those, and, and there are stories there. There are stories that, there are stories that need to be told uh, from that community and all. Uh, I'll give you an example on how important it is. So when we did the, when I did the, the mural at the Center for Creative Study, um, it was a tile mural. And on the corner of um, uh, Ferry and Brush Street, uh, at one time on Ferry Street, African Americans couldn't walk on Ferry Street. And uh, so um, Mary Bethune, uh, she bought a lot of these homes or a lot of these buildings throughout the United States. And one of them was here at the Women's, uh, Women's League uh, uh, on the corner of uh, Brush and, uh, and, uh, and Ferry Street. But there was a stipulation when she bought this house. They said that we will sell you the house if you remove the front entryway from Ferry Street to the side on Brush Street. And that was the stipulation in order to buy the house because African Americans weren't able to walk on Ferry Street. So stories like this, um, you know, we we'll lose some of that because if we don't have these conversations, if we don't have these community forums, uh, we'll never know. And people are, they're, they're up in age. Um, they have uh, a, a, a family that ties back to that time and all. And if we don't have those conversations, like I said, we'll lose them. That's absolutely right. My grandparents moved to Detroit in the early 50s and the late 50s. Mm -hmm. And the area that we're doing the ground up project, just a couple blocks there at the corner of the boulevard mm -hmm. in Linwood, uh, in 1959, they attempted to rent Oh, there and wow. they were barred from renting there See? Yeah. and they only rented to whites at that time yeah and that was something i did not know mm -hmm. about their story mm -hmm. uh, they ended up moving a couple of blocks in mm -hmm. and uh, they were able to find a place there at that time but it is very interesting those people are living stories and living heroes because they tell us from whence we've come, and that's right. that helps us to understand that's right. clearly where we're going. That's right. And it's very important that we get those stories and have that information. Mm -hmm. If there was something that you could share with a young person today that has a desire to go into storytelling, art, uh, has a creative element uh, to their person, what would you say to that young person? Uh, I would tell them to uh, pursue your dream. Uh, I would tell them that uh, doesn't matter what school you go to, so long as you go to school. When I say school, when you go to uh, uh, college, doesn't matter. So long as you land there, so long as you pursue what it is that you really want to do. I uh, have that in mind. Um, it's never an easy road. It's a hard road, but it's a road uh, uh, for life if that's something that you really want to do. And uh, you know, keep your focus. 
keep your faith. Phenomenal. You all heard it best. Dr. Hubert Massey, thank you so much, sir, for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you. Absolutely phenomenal. Thank we you. appreciate you.